Hello everyone, assalamu alaikum. Um, so today I decided to create a little informational video about the Quran's uh, mathematical structure because I believe this is something greatly underappreciated um, in terms of one of the Quran's um, miracles, I would say. Uh, considering this is the final version of the Quran that 95% of Muslims use today. So it would be appropriate to look into this deeper. So these are two relevant verses to this math structure. Um, so we have Quran 15.9. It says, Indeed it is we who sent down the Quran, and indeed we will be its guardian. And a more unusual one, Quran 89.3, uh, God swears by the even and odd in general. So, by the even and odd. Um, so, this math structure uh, does actually depend, at least for the three points I'm going to bring up, uh, it's going to depend on this even and odds uh, in regards to its chapters and verses. Um, so, of course, the verse doesn't only mean that it's referring to this math stuff, but I think I'm just saying it's cor definitely correlated to it, and it's very, very um, interesting how it plays out. Um, and also, tied into this, it kind of, when you actually see the math for yourself, it kind of shows you that the text has been watched over in a very unusual way. But first, let's uh, clear out some things that people might bring up. So first of all, the exact uh, numbering system used for the Quran and um, how it's recited and uh, where the ayahs start and end. This wasn't determined uh, completely until in uh, 1924 in Cairo, Egypt. Um, before that, there was more room for other people, other Arabs, to use other readings and variants for the Quran. But today, after that's been standardized and heavily re researched and canonized into a final form, almost all Muslims use this uh, completed um, form. Um, so after that, after 1924, a few decades later, when computers and software became more accessible to us, uh, people started, Muslims started looking into math patterns into the Quran. One of these uh, very, very incredible ones is what we could call a checksum. So a checksum is used to determine if a piece of data is uh, transferred without any errors. So that would mean it contains the full message in there. And this would rely on the order of the chapters and their relevant verses. <coughs> so the method to arrive at this checksum or how this ev this math pattern is even created, or found, or derived, um, we have uh, we create three columns. In the first column, you have the chapter number, chapter numbers one through one fourteen. In the second column, you have the verse totals for each chapter. So, chapter one, next to it would be the total verses, seven verses. And the third column would be the sum, so 1 plus 7. And you continue doing that for all 114 chapters. Once you're done, you'll find that there are 57 even sums and 57 odd sums. If you sum up the 57 even sums, those sum up to the total verses in the entire Quran. 
if you total the 57 odd sums, they total up to the total chapter sums. By total chapter sums, that means you take each chapter number, so 1, 2, 3, 4, you add all of those up to 114. Why? Because this specifies that uh, this is how many chapters are um, have been preserved. So 140 chapters sum up to this number, total verses sum up to that number, and we have these two coincidences already. Well, actually three right there, which is already highly, highly incredible. And the reason this is even relevant, and it's not just random, um, just refer back to the verse where the oath is taken on even and odd. So that's the correlation there. Um, also, another uh, most recently found after, so initially I found the checksum, but then I also went in further and found this online as well. You also notice in that third column, there are many duplicate sums, which is, to me, it seems to be an unusual amount. So there could be like five uh, 103 sums, or several two, several pairs of old triplets, several duplicates. If you take those duplicates and sum them up uh, and divide by the unique numbers, which aren't duplicated anywhere, you'll get 1.618. And if you apply the golden ratio formula, it is also 1.618, which means all of the verses, all of the chapters are arranged in a very mathematically beautiful way, which if you take one verse out, the whole thing is destroyed, which means this book certainly has been watched over. It's been arranged in a way that is just mathematically beautiful and structured. So in summary, we have the symmetry, 57 even, 57 odd. The 57 evens sum up to the total crown verses. The 57 odds sum up to the total chapter sums. And the golden ratio, as I just explained, is also in there. And it's all tied using the same chapter sums, not some other calculations or numerology that people like to loosely combine. It's all with the same chapter sums. <coughs> now, of course, people are going to question, okay, so what if it's just a coincidence? Um, if you've ever taken a probability class or have any sort of common sense regarding probability with numbers, or if you're even decently good at math, um, it would be highly, incredibly unlikely. Some things happen which simply cannot be explained by mere coincidence. Also, um, I haven't really found this in any other text. Nothing, nothing remotely close to this so far. Um, and I, I highly doubt there will be because it's highly, highly fragile, highly difficult to even come up with a pattern to fit all of this in on your own. And if we travel back to 1924, they did not have software or or even calculators. Those were more popular and those became commonly used in like the 1960s or 70s. So by the time the Quran was finalized in 1924, it would have been extremely difficult to even detect such a pattern. Um, so, yeah, each chapter's verse counts um, could be even or odd, which would influence the column of sums as well as the golden ratio. So all that means is one verse could be off and the whole thing falls apart. Um, another objection, you could say someone or the people there that were involved in finalizing the Quran, um, they did it on purpose which is incredibly um, unlikely, and there's just no reason, there's no motive, there's no reason, There's it's actually the opposite of reason to suggest that, because um, first of all, it's 
um, the committee involved, but uh, was under the guide of a religious leader, not some mathematician. There were no mathematicians in that committee. It was just religious scholars trying to organize the Quran uh, according to one reading, which is the Hafs reading, and so that it could become standard for um, the uh, Egyptian schools to use, which then other people adopted and became accepted worldwide, even by Western academics. So, first of all, trying to arrange or force math into the Quran would have probably had, you'd probably be jailed or killed, <laughs> to be honest, for being some kind of heretic, which has already happened to one person in the 1970s. Um, he was killed for trying to remove two verses from the Quran because he created this math pattern of 19 and he said, because these two verses do not fit within that 19 pattern, that means we have to remove them. And two guy or one person assassinated him just for that. So imagine if you were in the center of that school, you would probably be thrown into a mental institute. Um, and there was just zero reason to even include such a pattern anyways. They were not trying to, like, delegitimize other readings. They were just trying to make it um, to, to create a standard that people can reference and make it easier to learn and to use um, in their schools. Um, and also, yeah, nobody was searching or trying to fit any math patterns until the 1970s when this person I just talked about was assassinated uh, for even attempting to. Um, so yeah, we did not hear about anything regarding these math patterns at all until computers and software came about. <coughs> so regarding why the, as I just mentioned, why they decided to finalize the Quran into one standard, um, there were different versions or readings of how to recite or how to uh, read the Quran and within the schools it became kind of confusing so they created a committee to establish a standard text for those Egyptian government schools um, and in 1924 it became mass printed and widely used and that's the same version we have today <sighs> There are more objections, but these are pretty low IQ ones. Um, so we have the 114 divided by 2 equals 57. Basically, people that don't know how even it's an odd checksums work. Um, another objection would be, you can find this anywhere. Um, so I would respond, go ahead. I haven't been able to. Nobody I have shared this with been able to, not on anywhere. Um, and it, it's just the, I've noticed in the responses I've gotten from sharing this, um, some people are just lazily dismissing the pattern without even it, like understanding how complex it is to derive it or to arrive at it, how incredibly impossible it is for such a structure to just, um, uh, uh, be found like that or created like that. Um, especially with no computers and software, in a gathering of traditional religious leaders who would prefer to kill you uh, than introduce some fancy math into the Quran. And a reminder, it's not just some loose numbers. It's using the same ch chapter sums. And we have four of these beautiful patterns in there that tightly wrap up the Quran structure like it's a Quran spine in terms of its mathematical structure. Um, some might object about the other readings and variants. Why aren't there math patterns in there? I guess, I don't know, but I could guess that this is the uh, final standard that God has preferred for all of us to use over the others. I'm not sure. Um, 
After all, 95% of Muslims today use this standard, and perhaps in the future the other ones will die out. Uh, one personal thing to note is that it took such a long time to even have this final form today that almost all Muslims use, and it's done in 1924, just a few decades before the tech revolution with computers and software and calculators um, for anyone to easily detect and observe these patterns. Um, my just assumption, nothing solid here, but perhaps it could be for us to increase our faith through objective means now that religion is more harshly questioned and other atheism is widely accepted and people are demanding more proof of uh, the divine in our age um, <coughs> but yeah it would be useful to include in your list of Quran um, I guess evidences to share with people so not only do we have linguistic superiority and beauty of the Quran we also have mathematical beauty and superiority too so I would highly suggest you share this with people and um, it would help others in realizing that the Quran is has been watched over by God has been preserved and now we have mathematical beauty in there too so thank you for watching and assalamu alaikum.